Democracy democracy is really at stake. You can't be a democracy when you support violence, when you don't like the outcome of the election. Ladies and gentlemen, please explain this to me how Democrats are crying democracy is in danger because the polls suggest that people are voting them out of power. I, I get the fact that their party's name is Democrats and because a lot of them aren't real bright, they might be equivocating, thinking that the Democratic Party stands for democracy, and therefore if you vote them out, you're anti-democracy. I just don't know, but I believe Peter Ducey called the press secretary out on this. Um, I don't know how liberalism and how people consistently live according to this irrational worldview. Anyway, please tell me. Please explain, folks. The fact is that I think there are periods in history where we reach certain inflection points, where everything is going to come after is going to change what's been before for the next generation. And we're in one of those points. It happens six, eight, every, gener every six or eight generations. Things are changing. They're changing rapidly. You see everything from what's happening in Europe and India, from Russia, China, things are changing. And the United States has to regain its footing and remember who we are. And so one of the things that I concluded was that, uh, you know, uh, the, you know, those inflection points are the places where you look back two, five, 10 years later and realize it's just not what it was before. It's either better or worse than it was before. Not the same. You're not going to go back to the same. And I'm absolutely convinced, and I mean this, no one's ever doubt I mean what I say. The problem is I sometimes say all that I mean. And, uh, but all kidding aside, one of the things that was clear to me is that this new group headed by the former president, the former defeated president, uh, we found ourselves in a situation where we were either going to look forward or look backwards. And it's clear which way he wants to look. It's clear which way the new MAGA Republicans are. They're extreme. And democracy is really at stake. You can't be a democracy when you support violence when you don't like the outcome of the election. You can't call yourself a democracy when you don't, in fact, count the votes that people legitimately cast and count that as who you are. You can't be a democracy and call yourself one if you continue to do what they're doing. And so, folks, look. Joining me now to discuss the midterms and other important topics, the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi. Welcome, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much for coming. My pleasure to be here. 
So let's talk about rising inflation concerns along with crime, giving momentum, new momentum to Republicans after the Democrats were closing the gap, the historic gap. Yes. So after the Supreme Court ruling, there was huge outrage. That has seemed to subside, at least among overriding concerns. Despite all the legislative accomplishments, and I, I want to cite them, I want to, you know, say it's been an extraordinary session. You and the president have done so much in terms of domestic concerns, the economy. So why is this message? Why do you think the president has gotten this message through the voters? Well, first of all, uh, let me say uh, that I think that much of what you've said I don't agree with. That is okay. to say, the New York Times poll, I think, is an outlier poll. You just cite one poll, but all the other it's polls. It's also the real clear different... politics average no. is showing similar issues. No, the, but these, but that was one that brought down the average, and it was an outlier. It wasn't even that big a sample. So I, I dismiss that. Uh, I've been, uh, since Congress adjourned, I've been in an average of five states a week. And I can tell you uh, that women's concerns about their freedom are very, very much still very significant in terms of how they will vote. In fact, 80% of people who care about a woman's right to choose say they will vote, they will determine who they vote for. So again, uh, Washington has always been, all oh, the Republicans are going to win, there's no question, for a year and a half. Now that that has diminished in terms of that certainty, and there is a, a real race on, the Republicans are pouring endless money, dark, undisclosed special interest money into the campaigns, but we're holding our own. It's a matter of who turns out to vote. Uh, there are issues that we, of course, we want to uh, uh, fight inflation. It's a global issue. But some of the inflation in our country sprang from the fact that this president created nearly 10 million jobs, nine, at least 9 million jobs working with the private sector. The private sector creates a lot of that. And, uh, and, and when you, uh, as, uh, as the distinguished chair of the Fed told me when I was a brand new member of Congress, Chairman Greenspan said, uh, when you're talking about inflation, unemployment can be dangerously low. So they are not un unrelated. So we feel we feel pretty good about it. We uh, I track these this uh, these campaigns very carefully. Uh, I believe that we will have the ter the mobilization to own the ground to turn out the vote. Uh, the clear message they want to we want to give women freedom of choice. They want to have a ban on abortion. We want to support and strengthen Medicare, Social Security, etc. Uh, they want to use the debt ceiling uh, to cut that. We want to we have we have lowered the cost of prescription drugs for seniors. They want to reverse that. We want to save the planet for our children in the future. They say that that's a hoax, and that's the argument they used on the floor to oppose the Inflation Reduction Act, which made historic gains for well, fighting the comet. Let me ask, why did the president wait till now to make this major push for what he says will be a post-election call for a fast track on abortion rights nationwide? Because the House passed it in the fall after after yeah. Texas, the Senate failed to to win the vote in the spring. Why didn't the president really push for that last fall when outrage over the draft opinion 
showed the handwriting was on the wall. Well, the president has been a very strong supporter uh, of a woman's right to choose. In your preview, you said, why is he waiting until after the election instead of doing it now? We don't have 60 votes in the Senate. If we could get two more. You don't think he could have pushed harder on the Senate last You think we would have gotten 60, uh, 10 Republican votes? You think we would have gotten 10 Republican votes? Oh, come on. You know, let's, let's, um, with all due respect, okay. the fact is we need to get two more Democratic votes to push back this, uh, the filibuster and therefore be able to, with 51 votes uh, to enshrine Roe v. Wade into the law. And that will be on the 50th, around the time of the 50th anniversary of, of Roe v. Wade de a Supreme Court decision. When the court decision came down on Dobbs, we were ready. We were ready with great candidates, with mobilization at the grassroots level, with a message discipline for the districts we have to win, and for money. Uh, we're out raising Republicans uh, with our candidates, with their dark money, of course. They have endless. We don't need endless. We just will have enough. One of the issues that's obviously going to be at stake on this election is democracy and the end of the January 6th investigation if the Republicans take over the House. It dies with the end of this Congress. All their evidence gathered. You stood up to Donald Trump throughout your tenure, ripping his State of the Union speech and standing up and walking out of a cabinet meeting, you know, a meeting with leadership. You put him on notice. And now we've seen that you said, uh, on the day of the riot, you said that if he led the rioters and came up to the hill, you would have punched him out. That's right. Uh, I don't even like to talk about him because it's really a tragedy for you, our country. But you did say you would have punched him out. I would have punched Tell him, him out. I said I would have punched him out. I would have gone to jail and I would have been happy to do so would you have done for that? our country. But he wouldn't have had the courage to come to the hill. He's all talk. But let me just say, say this. this the, our democracy is at stake when you define democracy as integrity of the vote. They want to suppress the vote. They've been doing that for a long time. They want to nullify the uh, um, the results of an election. They're even proposing that after an election, if they don't like the results, they will change the rules that would have governed that election retroactively. So you, you have to you have to recognize that they are undermining our democracy. And if people think that Arizonans who, who are just regular folks, Republicans, ask yourself, that's the guy you want in charge of your elections? Somebody who was part of a, an insurrection and it thinks it's okay to, for armed people to stand to intimidate folks next to ballot boxes? That's how America's democracy is supposed to work? I don't... I, doesn't that override party labels? And Arizona, let's be honest with each other for a second. I know folks out there, including Republicans, may be thinking there's no way somebody like that's actually going to get elected. Uh, you, you may think that's too extreme for Arizona, but we've seen I, I mean, folks can win if we don't do our part. And if you've got election deniers serving as your governor, as your senator, as your secretary of state, as your attorney general, then democracy as we know it may not survive in Arizona. That's not an exaggeration. That is a fact. They just want to distract from the disasters they created. As threats against elected officials surge, President Biden linked the January 6th Capitol violence to the attack on House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's husband, Paul, at their San Francisco home. The assailant ended up using a hammer to smash Paul's skull. U.S. Capitol Police revealing they have cameras surveying the residents, but that they were not being actively monitored because the speaker wasn't there. Last week, the Department of Homeland Security warned in a bulletin obtained by ABC News that violent extremists could pose a heightened threat to the midterm elections. It should be another wake-up call with respect to the moment that we're in. The alleged assailant who broke into Pelosi's home is due back in court tomorrow on attempted murder and attempted kidnapping charges. And when ABC News, Washington. Recent polls have shown that overwhelming majority of Americans believe our democracy at is at risk, that our democracy is under threat. They too see that democracy is on the ballot this year, and they're deeply concerned about it. So today, I appeal to all Americans, regardless of party, to meet this moment of national and generational importance. We must vote, knowing what's at stake and not just the policy of the moment, but institutions that have held us together, as we sought a more perfect union, are also at stake. We must vote knowing who we have been, what we're at risk of becoming. A vote is not a partisan tool to be counted when it helps your candidates and tossed aside when it doesn't. Second, we must, with an overwhelming voice, stand against political violence and voter intimidation, period. Stand up and speak against it. We don't settle our differences in America with a riot, a mob, 
or a bullet or a hammer. We sell them peaceably at the battle at the battle box, the ballot box. We have to be honest with ourselves, though. We have to face this problem. We can't turn away from it. We can't pretend it's just going to solve itself. There's an alarming rise in the number of our people in this country condoning political violence or simply remaining silent because silence is complicity. The disturbing rise of voter intimidation, the pernicious tendency to excuse political violence, or at least, at least trying to explain it away. We can't allow this sentiment to grow. We must confront it head on now. It has to stop now. This is also the first election since the events of January 6th, when the armed angry mob stormed the U.S. Capitol. I wish, I wish I could say this. And tonight, President Biden issued a primetime address to ask voters to consider the threat to democracy when they head to the ballot box next week. The president singled out ultra MAGA Republicans, calling them election disruptors, saying claims of a stolen election have fueled a dangerous rise of political violence. The speech comes days after an intruder broke into House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's California home and attacked her husband last Friday. We need to start looking out for each other again, seeing ourselves as we the people, not as entrenched enemies, lies of conspiracy and malice, lies repeated over and over to generate a cycle of anger, hate, vitriol, and even violence. Republicans condemning the president's remarks tonight. Meanwhile, the president warning voters that hundreds of Republican candidates have questioned the integrity of American elections. He says he hopes voters remember that when they head to the polls next week. We have to tell the real truth about this, this campaign. Our voice, our democracy, and a government of the people, by the people, and for the people are at stake. And this is the voice we will lose if the Special Exemptions Act is passed. I know we have defeated similar initiatives before, but we must not take anything for granted. Let's celebrate our 150th year the same way we founded this organization, speaking out for our students, speaking out for educators, and speaking up for what's right. Now, do you remember when Joe Biden promised to unify America? As the Democrat candidate, he portrayed then-President Donald Trump as divisive, and Biden promised to bring the country together. I'm going to uh, go all over this country, every part of the Democratic Party, and be united. Men, women, gay, straight, everyone, black, brown. Bringing America together, uniting our people, uniting our nation. Get the nation to come together, unite the nation. United, we can and will overcome this season of darkness in America. In reality, of course, Biden's been every bit as polarizing in his politics as Donald Trump. He's spoken about Trump supporters as a threat to the republic. He's given succor to violent protesters. And he's demonized his political opponents in the United States that has descended into a hyper-partisan political battleground. Yet now, with the polls starting to turn against the Democrats again in the final few days of the midterm campaigns, the president has sought to claim democracy for himself. In a hastily arranged speech, Biden has declared that Americans need to vote for his party in order to save democracy, invoking political violence that's occurred on both sides of Except election results, which all to the aisle, Biden has claimed the high moral ground. This intimidation, this violence against Democrats, Republicans, and nonpartisan officials just doing their jobs are the consequence of lies told for power and profit, lies of conspiracy and malice, lies repeated over and over to generate a cycle of anger. Front those lies with the truth. The very future. Yeah, well, this stuff is audacious and extraordinary. We all know what Trump has said about the 2020 election. Graceful refusal to offer the loser's consent that's so crucial in democracies. But we also know about some of the highly questionable American electoral practices, some brought in for the pandemic, some long-standing. And we all know this is a live and important debate in US politics. But for the Dem Party is a vote against democracy. Well, that's the rhetoric you might expect from a tyrant. Candidates running for every level of office in America, for governor, Congress, attorney general, secretary of state, who won't commit, they will not commit to accepting the results of election that they're running in. This is a path to chaos in America. It's unprecedented, it's unlawful, and it's un-American. Now, the point here is you don't have to disagree with that sentiment to be critical of Biden sharing it in this way. All you have to do is look at a montage, such as I've shown you before, of Democrats denouncing and refusing to accept electoral outcomes. You can run the best campaign, you can even become the nominee, and you can have the election stolen from you. How can you win with Russian interference? That's, That's a real what I'm thing. About no, in but, but rightly. Because right. I think he's an illegitimate president that didn't really win. So how do you, you know, fight against that in 2020? You are absolutely right. He's an illegitimate president in my mind. Could you be my vice president? <laughs> president? <laughs> Folks, look, I absolutely agree. Trump didn't actually win the election in 2016. He lost the election, and he was put in office because of the Russian interference. Trump knows he's an illegitimate president. 
Yeah, what's that about unprecedented again, Mr. President? What's that about unlawful and un-American? I happen to believe that Americans have every right to vote for whoever they believe might govern best, looking after their economic, social and security interests. And they might not be overly enthusiastic about a party whose president is as muddle-headed as this. Well, if anybody think if we're doing it for the first time now in the 20th, 21st century, going into the 20th, from the 20th century going into the second quarter of the 21st century, that we'd say 12 years is enough? I think 12 years is enough in the, going into 20, 30, 40, 50? Good Lord, doesn't know what year it is you say. This bloke isn't sure what century we're in. And never forget what the left think of voters. Time and again, they talk about the so-called deplorables. The people who don't vote left are either evil or stupid or both. Here's the latest denunciation of voters from Hillary Clinton. I think with all of the noise that we've got in this election season, um, I don't think people um, are able to really grasp that. But more importantly, I'm not sure they really understand the threats to their way of life. Yeah, they just don't understand, do they? They do it all the time, the left. They do it here, too. They tell voters they are idiots at the same time they ask them for their votes. To me, this never seems wise. This was no normal pre-election speech. Scheduled late and with a sense of urgency, it wasn't about policy. Good evening, everyone. It was about the stability of the nation. My fellow Americans, we're facing a defining moment, an inflection point. Make no mistake, democracy is in the ballot for all of us. His party may well be trailing in the polls. A drubbing next week is possible, and so of course he's looking for votes. But the president sought to get beyond that. This is not about me. It's about all of us. It was a warning about what he sees as the fraying fabric of American society. A struggle for decency and dignity. A struggle for prosperity and progress. A struggle for the very soul of America itself. Every day since he lost the 2020 election, Donald Trump has cried foul, claiming continually without any evidence that he won. You know, American democracy is under attack because the defeated former president of the United States refused to accept the results of the 2020 election. Every recount confirmed the results. Yet polls suggest that up to 70% of Republican voters believe President Trump. Mr. Biden drew a line between what he called the big lie and a hammer attack last week on the House Speaker's husband. The assailant ended up using a hammer to smash Paul's skull. We don't settle our differences in America with a riot, a mob, or a bullet, or a hammer. There are up to 300 Republican election deniers on the ballot next week, Trump allies like Arizona's Carrie Lake. If they win, they will judge the validity of the next presidential election. An intervention like this is extremely controversial, saying in such stark terms that only his party stands for democracy. Is he essentially telling voters that the nation's democracy has already been lost? And just days away from the elections into such a tense environment, it's high risk indeed. Mark Stone, Sky News in Washington.